G'day YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well today we're just going to do a quick clip on what you need to do to either remove the top lift cover off a T20 Ferguson or to remove the hydraulic pump out of the bottom. Now the jobs are very similar, there's um, the, the first eight steps on each job are exactly the same. Um, and look, it mainly consists of um, just dropping oil out and basic jobs like that, but, but we'll, we'll go through it. Um, this clip won't have anything to do with installing or overhauling the hydraulic pump or overhauling the lift cover. This is just a, how to get it out on the bench so you can work on it and not break anything along the way. Now the, the little hydraulic pump control valve it's got a couple of little small legs on it and what the common fault is or, or the common um, mistake people make is just undoing it and lifting the top off and not releasing that control valve out of the hydraulic pump so we'll try and go through that and try and explain how to get the parts off easily and without damaging anything and, and giving yourself an extra bill for parts that you don't necessarily need. So follow along, we'll zoom in on here a bit. I'll take a, a photo of this clip that we we put in the video, just so you can freeze frame it if you need to um, take your phone out to the shed or wherever you need to go and, um, and follow along. So um, yeah, follow along. Hopefully you get something good out of it. Now I've just gone and got a hydraulic control valve. Now this is what it looks like. That's the levers and those little balls there um, are the wear surfaces. There's a fork that comes down from the top from your hydraulic control lever and it sits on these forks here. And this valve sits in your hydraulic pump and as you raise and lower, it just works back and forth in the housing there. Now, what happens if you don't undo the forks? What happens is you bend this piece here or the piece in the side of the pump here bends. Now a, a little trick on some of them and it depends if you want to do it or not you can see a little clip there some have a little R clip like that if they're the later ones um, some have a um, some have a split pin that you can't get to so it's normally better just to spread the arms on the fork and then you'll notice on here we say then lower the hydraulic lever so once we know it's free we lower the hydraulic lever and that brings the arms back out of the way so you have a clear lift so that's why we need to do that with the I'll just try and get this clip out if you where the clip sits on the valve there that pivots and that piece in there is very thin there's a ball here half a, a semi spherical ball here and you end up bending this this ends up with a big bend at the very least um, if things go real bad um, you jam the whole thing up and you can break them you can do all sorts of things so follow along we'll see if we can um, get you on the right track anyway This is on our 1948 TEA 20 we're doing up. You can see where I've drained the oil. The square pot is straight under the hydraulic pump and the plug is this one here that an inch and a sixteenth spanner fits. The one at the back, it's an 11 sixteenth and it's a small tapered plug. Looks like that. Number two, the top lift um, pins. We'll just hone in on them. 
That's this here. Now it doesn't matter if you take this pin out like I did or you take this pin out that comes across there. You have to do that on both sides of the tractor. Now, number three on the list, remove the draft string pin. That's this pin here that goes on, on to this spring. On mine I've taken this bush out already, so that comes away, but on yours that will probably stay there. Number four, remove both side covers. This is the PDA side cover, we just undid the six bolts. On the other side of the tractor we have a plate that has a transmission dipstick. Take that off out of your way. Now, number five, remove the rear PDA shaft. Now, the rear PDA shaft sits up the back. I've already restored this one. You undo the four bolts, which go here, and you pull the whole housing out. And this part of the housing down here on the spline, that goes up and drives your hydraulic pump as well. Okay, now job number six on our list is raise the hydraulic lever. Now, inside there, this piece here is hooked to your hydraulic lever. And I'll see if I can hone in enough to get your video of that actually moving. And that's lever down. This is lever up. So that moves the control valve towards the front which gives you a little bit more room to pop your hand down in there. Now inside this is part of the fork that goes back and forth and what you need to do is pull one one way and one the other like that, look inside or feel inside and you can feel that the hydraulic control valve has come out of those two forks. So the next thing is to move this to the rear and that will give that clear access for the control valve to come out. Now in this instance we're going to pull the top cover off first and hopefully by pulling the top cover off I can get a good bit of film down onto the control valve to try and show you what happens. Now <laughs> This is a bit colourful, isn't it? I've got the paint pen out. Now, all of the bolt heads with the yellow paint on, there's 14 of them, they're the ones that you take out. The two pink ones, that's where the bracket came around and up to the seat. You can undo those and take the seat out of the way like I've done, but there's no need to do that if you feel competent to get the seat off without anything happening um, or up being too heavy or anything well look feel free these red ones don't undo them now the reason I say that is those four bolts hold the main hydraulic lift cylinder in and there's no need to take them out once you lift the lift cover off those bolts will come and the, well, the bolts will come and the cylinder will come with the top cover so there's no need um, just undo the yellow ones and the top will come off. So look, I'll go and get a nut gun, I'll rattle the yellow bolts away and away we go. Actually I'll come over the top there just so you can see where all the bolts are. Near the yellow ones, just the yellow ones. So I'll go and unbolt them and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I'm now around the back of the tractor. I've taken all the 14 yellow bolts out. Now, you should be able to just lift this cover. Normally I'd use a crane, but I just haven't got the wherewithal. And see that just comes up like that. Now, that fork is what we spread to get the control valve off. So we'll go and put this aside for working on later, and we'll drop the pump down. Well, I've got the camera up the top looking down slightly to the left hand side. This here, this shaft is what drives from the gearbox to your transmission. This shaft here is your pinion. Now when you stick your hand in the side hole to spread the arms 
your control bow was way down the bottom there. And but I'm sorry, I just can't seem to get a better picture of it. But as it goes back and forth down the bottom there, you can actually pull it out at this stage and have a look. And that's just the same as the valve we showed you earlier. And looks to be in good order. Okay, now getting the pump out. This shaft stays there. The only reason that comes out or comes apart is if you split the front of the housing, which we're not doing in this instance. So we'll try and get under there somehow and drop the pump down. Look at all the muck down the bottom there too. The, um, all these old tractors have rubbish down there and they have just, just heaps of dirty junk. And bits of grease and <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a pretty sight. Well under the pump here, there was 9 bolts and 11 16 spanner fits. I've undone them all. I'm pulling my tractor apart on a pallet. So it's just sitting up there on the pallet. But now, once we break the gasket, that should drop down onto my rags. And I'll try and get it down there without popping in the way of the camera. <laughs> have to bring it down so it clears the housing and there it is so we'll pull that pump apart in a in another video and we'll work through doing it up and what to look for and we'll work through the hydraulic cover as well well there you go we've just um, just removed the hydraulic lift cover and the hydraulic pump off a Ferguson TE20. Now in some of the later tractors where those legs come down there's a little alloy support and you have to undo that to spread the legs out um, but this tractor is the early one it doesn't have that so we can only show you what we have um, and look if you um, have a go the reason we do these videos is to encourage people to have a go um, if they collect tractors or have one for their little piece of land that they like to play with it's all the more fun if you can um, work on it yourself save yourself a bit of money and have fun with it um, the way I do things here may not be how you do it or your mate does it or a bloke down the road that you know does it that's fine um, that just means there's many ways of doing the one job um, I've just finished I've just gone 40 years on the spanners as a tractor mechanic and um, but I've enjoyed the trade, um, but one thing I have learnt is um, <laughs> I've been splitting tractors for many years and I've, I've put someone on and they said, oh, I'll go out and they've split it a completely different way to me and I think, God, why didn't I think of that? So there's probably other ways of doing this. This is how I choose to do it. So if you know something different or you can have something constructive to add to it, leave it in the comments down below. Um, but we're going to try and build a bit of a library of tractor repairs at Bundy Bear Shed to help people out. So um, please like and subscribe and um, yeah, come on board and, and have a bit of fun with us. Um, I do try and um, answer all comments that I see on the channel. Sometimes I'm a couple of days late, but I'll, I will try and get there and do them. And, um, and if you'd like to help the channel, just watch a couple of 15 second ads at the front of the clips. That's how us YouTube blokes get paid. <laughs> I don't do it for the money, I do it for the fun and um, I just like to um, have, a, have a library out there of how to do a few little jobs. So, um, But yeah, see how you go, have a go, don't be afraid to leave a message and ask a question. I'll catch you later, eh?